Hi, this is Leonie from Spines and Splines. I'm back with another older project today. We revamped this old Yamaha RGZ321 guitar last year, and it's an electric guitar that my husband has had longer than he's known me, which is quite a long time at this point. He bought it for cheap back in the 90s, and while it's not the best guitar we have, it's got enough cool features that we've held onto it and even moved countries with it. For example, it's the only guitar that we have currently that's got a tremolo system, and this particular model also has a clear pick guard that covers the whole front of the body, which makes it pretty easy to take the faceplate off and change the picture underneath, which is clearly why we have not done it for 20 years. But anyway, it was the very first thing Paul did when he bought the guitar, as he hated the really generic metal style stock image that came with it. The Rosella photograph he replaced it with though has also long since passed its own use by date, and the guitar has basically sat around for years getting dirtier and more neglected because neither of us have wanted to play it. In an effort to make more use of the things that we already have, we decided to clean it up and give it a new look. Now at the time that I originally filmed this video, I'd recently been sent a bunch of beautiful Sennelia Ankara drawing inks by my parents for my birthday, and that's my birthday a full year ago, if you want the inside story on how long this video has been sitting unfinished on my computer. Anyway, the colours are really vibrant and wonderful, and when Paul saw them he requested something that used the pinks and reds and yellows for the guitar. Using some heavyweight printmaking paper that I'd printed etching proofs on years ago, I decided to paint up a couple of options in a fairly free style. I wanted the design to have a pretty loose painterly feel and I used a pretty chunky Japanese ink brush to do the painting. To help the ink spread in interesting ways, I laid down some water on the paper before I added each colour. I wasn't loving this first attempt, the really loose painted strokes were just too freeform and too busy and I used too many different shades of the same colours so it just ended up looking a bit monotonous. Paul had said specifically that he wanted the pinks and yellows and didn't really want any blues or other cool colours in the image, but I decided to try just adding one shade of blue to see what the effect would be and it was just an immediate improvement and it really gave a lift and highlight to the other colours that I was using. Painting with a more structured, repeated shape also added some more dynamic interest to the pattern. So I went back and added some blue to the first sheet as well but still decided on the second pattern as it was just visually more interesting.
When the ink was dry, I traced the original faceplate image and cut everything out with a really sharp scalpel using a cutting mat and also a little hole punch that I have for the screw holes as that was just a bit easier than cutting every single hole out with a scalpel. And then I used a little white vinegar, some cotton tips and a dry paintbrush to clean up the guitar, getting rid of as much of the dust as possible. Now these aren't the original guitar pickups, they were replaced a long time ago when Paul was cleaning it. Saw some waxy stuff that bothered him, pulled at it and broke those pickups. He made a note to tell me to mention that because he clearly still regrets it so many years later. He also wants to replace all the other pots and things on the guitar at some point because they're a bit crackly and past their prime now. For now though, I just did a gentle clean up and I polished the fretboard with some guitar specific lemon oil. We put on some new strings and now have a much more fun guitar that we've actually played recently. The one that um, Brendan has. What's the winding you're doing there? Uh, it's screwing in. It's always had a bit of flop. Uh, like a little bit of play. Do you hear that? Yep. I've never liked it. They have ones that snap in. They're, I think the real Floyd Roses snap in in some, in some way. The one that Brendan has, it just sits there. And if you lean gets forward with the guitar, it falls out. <laughs> Which apparently is how they're supposed to work. What? I don't get it. See, so what you basically want, you want it to be just loose enough that it will drop by itself. Let's see how that's dropping too yeah. fast. So this one either it's it's that which is too stiff, or it's that which is just a bit too loose. So it's yeah. always just been a bit frustrating. I always go for a little bit too stiff because at least yeah. I would know when I went for it, it hadn't that gone all the way yeah. down. I want it basically if I'm holding it here, I want it to basically drop to there and go no further. Thanks for watching. I recently hit 1000 subscribers on this channel, which is not a lot in the big picture, but seems like an enormous amount of people to me. So I'm super pleased. I have a bunch of new video ideas that I'm working on and I'm looking forward to sharing soon. So as per usual, like, subscribe, share and comment if you enjoyed this video. And please consider hitting the Patreon link in the description and throwing me a buck or two there if you get some value from what I do. Cheers.